Hey, students of TA 300 Introduction to Theater. Um, this is Scott Gilbert, and we're going to talk today about what theater actually is. What is theater? Why are we in a class called Le Introduction to Theater, Intro to Theater? Um, what is the point of studying this thing? Well, the first step along the way to understanding a thing is to define the thing, and that's a little bit about a little bit of what we are going to do today. Uh, I'm Scott Gilbert. I'm going to do a separate video that introduces a little bit more about me, who I am, what I do, why I'm teaching this class. Um, but right now, we're going to actually talk about theater. Uh, I love to lecture about theater. I love to discuss it. Um, hopefully, this video will not be the end. You will watch this, and you will have questions, and you will have uh, contributions that come into the discussion portion of this uh, on Canvas. And as you work through your modules, um, and are writing things, you will be responding to what I'm doing and asking questions, and we'll go further. Um, I have not done a lot of this video lecture thing. I feel a little weird talking to myself about theater, to be perfectly frank. Uh, I want a bunch of you in front of me um, in a classroom so we can go back and forth about it a little bit, but we're going to do the best we can. Also, this lighting here in this video is making it look like I'm bald, and that's no good at all. I actually have a full head of curly, luxurious hair. I don't know what's happening with this lighting. It's terrible. Uh, anyway, let's talk about theater. In particular, let's talk about um, uh, a way to define theater and its um, roots in um, uh, rituals and um, cultures that can begin to explain what it actually is. You probably have in your head a definition of theater. Um, it may be a place you go. It may be a kind of performance that you see. It may be a kind of activity that people engage in. Um, you may think, oh, that guy is a theater professor and he does theater. Well, what does that actually mean? Um, what does it actually mean for you to go to see theater or for you to go to a theater. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that during the course of this um, semester. Um, and we're going to start off by defining the actual word. Um, theater is a word that comes from the Greek, from ancient Greek. It comes from the word theatron, T-H-E-A-T-R-O-N. Theatron was an ancient Greek word ancient Greek word meaning seeing place. It actually referred to the place where you went to to see Greek dramas. Uh, they were called amphitheaters, big um, uh, sloped uh, seating areas uh, with uh, performers down at the bottom where everybody could be around, uh, kind of like uh, stadiums today, kind of like uh, sports stadiums today um, in, in ancient Greece 2,500 years ago or so. Um, they would go to these places for a variety of reasons, but one was to see what were called dramas. Drama is, of course, a word that is sometimes synonymous with theater and sometimes not. Um, drama comes from the Greek word drawn, meaning to do. So it literally, theater comes from th theatron, a place to go see people do things. Drama. Um, almost all Western theater and all the ways we talk about it, all the words that define it, can be traced back to ancient Greece. We're going to talk during the course of this semester about why that is both uh, interesting and valuable, but also a little bit problematic. Um, it's very Western-oriented to trace all theater back to Western Greece, and we are going to try to um, discuss during the course of this class why Asian theater has its own roots and rituals, African theater has its own roots and rituals, um, theater from all parts of the world. All over the world, um, cultures uh, began to perform things at some point in their history that look a lot like theater to us. Um, so please note that when we trace theater back to ancient Greece, which we're going to do a lot, um, we need to be aware that Western bias is a real thing, Western cultural bias, sort of white European Western cultural bias is a real thing, uh, and we need to be wary of not recognizing what goes on in the rest of the world. Um, anyway, that's where the word theater comes from. That's where the word drama comes from. Um, so it's an interesting, important place to start. 
By the way, why do we spell theater T-H-E-A-T-R-E? Or why do I spell it that way uh, in your course materials? But why, when you go to the movie theater, is it spelled T-H-E-A-T-E-R? Um, the simplest explanation is just E-R is the American spelling and R-E is the English spelling. Um, and so to be absolutely correct, you can really spell it either way in any case. In almost all cases in America where we're not talking about live theater, performance theater, art theater, the kind of theater that I do for a living, um, we spell it with the E-R. Almost every movie theater it says E-R. Um, in England, if you went there, and in much of the English-speaking world, they would spell it with an R-E. Um, both are fine. Both are correct. To be perfectly honest, we usually spell it with an R-E in the theater world because we're trying to feel fancy. We're trying to feel theatrical and important. A lot of the Broadway theaters, you know, still use R-E. A lot of theaters around the country still use R-E. And it kind of attaches us to our roots and makes us feel a little separate and different from movie theaters. But both are correct. Both are fine. Um, one is just English. One is American. And I don't know why we feel we have to um, stick with English, but we do. All right. What makes something theater? What is theater? What is theater actually? Um, let's break it into its component parts. One element of theater is the production. It's all the elements when you go, buy a ticket, sit in a place, and watch theater. Um, it's scenery, it's costumes, it's properties, it's uh, lights, actors, video projection, special effects. Um, one element is what is being performed. It's the script or the scenario or the thing that is performing. If you go to see Hamlet, the story that is being told to you is Hamlet. It comes from a script by William Shakespeare. Um, if you go to see Hamilton... It's a musical with music and lyrics and a script that is the um, uh, genesis of what you're seeing performed. Um, the performers, the actors do something, the people on the stage, the human beings. One of the important components of live theater is that it's human beings doing things. It's not a recording in general. Um, there are exceptions to every rule. And then finally, the other component of live theater is the audience. Um, live theater does not exist without some humans watching the humans on the stage or in the area that is considered a stage. Um, which of these components are necessary for theater? Um, frankly, the production elements, the costumes, the sets, the sound effects. Um, is, it, is it possible to do a play without those? Absolutely. You can have a play in... Um, dress in uh, standard street clothes. You can have a play without sets at all. You can have a play outdoors in the quad. Um, you do not need those elements to make theater happen. They are very common um, and they're very important, but they're not essential. Is a script important? No. You are probably familiar with the term improvisation. Improv shows do not have a script. Um, I could come on campus tomorrow and do a show with no script and no special costume and no set at all. And if you came and watched me, uh, it would be theater in some ways. Um, are performers essential um, for a play? Yes, that is a thing we would say is essential. The performers are essential. The acting is at the heart of all theater. Um, one person does something and some other people watch them and they impersonate a character, they become a character. They are that character. That is essentially at the heart of, um, of what we consider to be theater. Impersonation um, of characters is a key in understanding what theater is. It's the foundation of any um, art form um, that we would call theater. And then is the audience essential? So if we have the production elements and the script as non-essential but important and the performers as essential, the audience is also essential. Um, is it possible to do a play without an audience? No. If you are at your house acting out a play and no one is watching, that's not really theater. Might be fun, might be cool, but it's not really theater. Uh, the noted theater director, Peter Brook, said all you need for a play to happen is an actor, an audience, and an empty space. Those three things make up theater.
but you got to have the actor doing some sort of impersonation of something. You've got to have the audience and you've got to be in a place that is special for this thing to happen. Um, so a simple formula for theater might be A performs B for C. Actor performs something for the audience or someone does something in front of someone else. Um, the definition from the Latin of audience, um, from the Latin word audientia, um, is hearing or attention. Um, so you, when the audience is engaged with something, hearing it, um, uh, paying attention to it, that is an essential part of being an audience. And that audience is essential to theater. Without that audience, Combined with the actor, we don't really have theater. Um, theater is generally considered to be an art form. Um, I consider it to be that. Um, we're going to talk much later about why study of theater is important in a world, the world you live in, where it's not super common and dominant in the culture. I am sure almost all of you are familiar with movies and television as dominant cultural forms. Um, there are online forms of entertainment and engagement that are becoming dominant that almost everybody engages in. Music um, is a, still a fairly dominant cultural form and theater is not. Um, but from theater comes a lot of those other forms that we would discuss um, or consider and so a, a, an understanding of theater can help us get to an understanding of entertainment and art in all senses. Um, so let's define the word art. Um, art can be defined as a human effort to imitate, supplement, alter, or counteract the works of nature. Um, the conscious production or arrangement of sounds, colors, forms, movements, or other elements in a manner that affects the sense of beauty, um, specifically the production of the beautiful in a graphic or plastic medium. Um, art is also the study of those activities that I just mentioned. All, art is also the product of these activities. So when you create a painting, um, you are manipulating color um, and um, form uh, in a manner that specifically says something, uh, alters something about your perception of either beauty or, um, or, or sometimes not beauty, but uh, feeling or emotion. Um, but art is also the study of that painting, the contemplation of that painting, and also art is also the product of these activities. So art is the doing of the painting. Art is the study of the painting. Art is the painting. If I handed you the painting and you hung it on your wall, you'd say, there, that's a piece of art. Um, let's look at um, this, the thing that I read to you earlier. This will be in your notes, this specific quote. Art is the conscious production or arrangement of sound, color, forms, movements, or other elements in a manner that affects the sense of beauty, specifically the production of the beautiful in graphic or plastic beauty. A medium. Um, art is not just a depiction of what is beautiful, it is subjective. Um, uh, I'm sorry, crazy fly is bothering me. Um, it is a representation of the artist's perception of the world. Um, art doesn't have to be pretty or you don't have to like it. Um, it has to be a conscious effort on the part of the artist to expose something, say something in the form of music or sculpture or a painting or a video or um, a collage or uh, a play uh, for those of us in this class. Um, art is subjective. It's okay not to like art. Um, it's okay to love art. Um, I will never say anything to you when we watch a play that I think is really cool and you don't like it. That's perfectly normal. Um, if we both went to the museum and both looked at a painting, um, I might be completely unimpressed and you might think it's the greatest thing you ever saw. That's fine. That's how art works. Um, you should always feel comfortable in this class and in any class about theater saying how you actually feel. Uh, in my acting classes, I try to encourage people not to be 
dismissive, not to say, oh, I hate that, that sucks, but instead explain why you don't respond to something, what you saw and what you were bored by or uninterested in or whatever it is. But it's always fine not to like it. Um, it's always fine to like it okay. It's always fine to really, really, really love it and engage with it and, and be freaked out by how cool it is. Um, art is subjective. Um, so uh, let's look back at again at the word theater. Theater is the work that the artist creates. Um, in the case of theater, it's almost always the work of a collaborative group of artists. Very little theater is produced by just one person. Almost every painting or sculpture is produced by one person, although there are sometimes that people collaborate. Many works of music, many compositions are produced by one person, usually played by more than one person, but not always. Um, but art is almost always collaborative. There's people who write plays, there's people who direct plays, there's people who um, uh, do the technical elements of plays, who design the things of plays, and there are actors, and there are backstage people, and there are support people in all sorts of areas of theater. Theater, in the commercial sense, in the world that I live in, where we try to make theater and then have people pay and come see it, requires lots and lots and lots of people to make it um, happen. So uh, theater is the work that the artist creates. That's one way to think about theater. Theater is a place. Um, it's not only an art form, um, it is the space where theater happens. So you can go to the theater. Um, there are theater buildings all over Sacramento um, where theater happens. Um, and they are called the um, Capitol Stage Theater or the B Street Theater. Um, that is the place where you would go to. Meet me at the B Street Theater. Uh, at 6.30 and then we're going to have something to drink and have something to eat and then we're going to see a, a play. Um, so theater is a space or a place. Um, sometimes theater happens in, like I said before, the quad or the street or places. Um, so that is the space in that case as well. Um, theater is also um, a thing we do. Um, it's, so it's a place for dramatic performance. Um, a theater is can describe the humans who make the play. So I used to be uh, an, um, a, an associate artist with the um, uh, Foothill Theater Company. We were a company of people who produced theater in Nevada City, where I live. We were theater professionals. We got together, and we were the theater. Not the place, we were the humans who made up the theater. Shakespeare had a company of players called the Admiral's Men and then later the Lord Chamberlain's Men who were a company of people whom they were the theater. Their job was to do theater. So theater can refer to the human um, people who make the art form known as theater. Um, a place for dramatic performance, um, a group of people who create theater, um, all these... Uh, different things can be described by the word theater. Um, and we're going to stop right here and then have part two of this lecture uh, in the next video.